Italy, they've taken the first step. So do you think the bankers, the central bankers, are they going to stop this from continuing? Do they have the ability to stop it? No, no. This is this truly is a revolution around the world. And, you know, obviously the big one is is the Trump uh, winning the election that the, the bankers were sure that they had rigged everything properly. Um, but from what I can see, the, the good guys are absolutely winning this war. For years, people were telling me that there are no good guys and, you know, there's no outside savior that's going to come and help us. I, I believe that there is no outside savior. The good guys are us and, and the things that we do. And, and there are some powerful people within the military that are working to take down these, these banksters and the bad guys and the pedophilia guys, all this, the whole system is changing and it's coming apart and it's not going to stop with the Italian referendum. Um, the, with, the, with Italy right now, you got uh, the, the ECB absolutely rigging every market just like in the United States to keep things together. But uh, they're going to fall, every, every uh, nation state or whatever they are in, in Europe, they completely lost their, uh, their, their nation when they signed up with the EU because you, if you don't have control of your own money, you're absolutely screwed. And how the people of Europe let this happen in the first place is beyond me. But now they're, they're saying no more. You know, we, we learn the errors of our ways. Um, but the problem, of course, is going to be that they have no other form of currency. And so it's pretty much guaranteed to be a rocky road for everyone, even for, within the United States from here on out. Um, and this will continue in Europe. Uh, it was always kind of the, the plan to have Europe go first and then the United States as far as the, you know, the economic crash and, and the monetary implosion and the implosion of the derivative market. So, yeah, yeah, things are moving right along. It's picking up speed, going faster and faster into the new year. Lots of signs pointing to massive changes next year. And I'm knee deep in, in that trying to understand uh, how this will all play out. Re nobody really knows how it's going to play out, but the long-awaited transition is is in full bloom, and it's easy to see now with the Brexit and the Trump win and the Italy referendum. And, and you're going to see it just tick one by one by one throughout Europe that people are going to throw off their suppressive leaders and and pick somebody new, completely different, with a different idea for their country. And they have to, because we're approaching a time when everything that was old will be thrown out and we're going to have to reconstruct something new for the future. You mentioned uh, Trump and we see that um, Jill Stein backed by Soros, probably Clinton. Uh, they're pushing these recounts in um, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. Do you believe these recounts are really to, you know, th the purpose is to recount the votes or is there something underneath this that they're really trying to do? Well, it's their last ditch effort to not not. It's not about the recounts. The vote the vote was rigged. Both votes, all votes are rigged these days with computers. The question was who had the rigging power, and Trump had the rigging power. The good guys had power over George Soros, who in, who literally funds and creates these voting machines, the electronic voting machines. But it is it's much deeper than that. This is no, they won't be able to stop Trump from getting into the office if anybody gets in the office as long as you know the world doesn't fall apart between now and january 20th um but the whole idea of the recount was to uh delay the electoral votes that uh are supposed to be cast on the 20th of december and then they're counted on the third of january by the new senate and if, if it, it will probably go to a vote in the house and the senate whether or not the electoral you know, votes will be honored, um, which is the right. You know, anybody can raise their hand on January 3rd when the, when the electoral votes are being counted and say, I want, a, you know, I want a vote within the House and the Senate. But the problem, obviously, is that Republicans control the House and the Senate. Um, a lot of that has to do with who Trump is putting in office, you know, picking to, to be our, our, you know, the, leader, the head of the Fed and, or, well, the head of the Treasury uh, and the head of all his cabinet uh, appointees, he has to sprinkle in bad guys and, as I call them, and and people from the old establishment, just so he gets in on the twentieth. Remember, Trump is the best firer in the world. He, he'll fire 
I, I don't want him to put a really good treasury secretary in there and then the market collapse a couple of weeks after he gets in there and he's going to have to fire that treasury secretary. I want him to put in the biggest shill market rigging guy known to man, which is this guy Muchin. And, and then when the system falls apart, I want him to fire him, the Goldman Sachs computer rigger, uh, and then hire someone that he wants. Probably uh, this guy, Allison is his last name and he's a, a sound uh, money guy and, and, most likely we'll, we'll say, let's go back to a gold standard and get rid of the Fed. So yeah, it, it's all kind of going as planned. So this recount, I think, is a, an aberration. Um, nothing will come of it. And the reason nothing will come of it is the good guys have the dirt on the bad guys and Clinton's not going to say anything or she'll be you know thrown in jail in a blink of an eye. And once they release her real emails, um, which are so criminal and, and so scary. And, and I, I think at some point that kind of exposure has to happen to these people who are stepping down now from from control. Do you think um, as we approach the 20th of January, we know there's um, protests being pushed for that day. Uh, do you think the bad guys at that point would try to have those protests become riots and spread across the country? Do you think they'll go that far to try to? I- it, it, it's de- it's definitely you know part of you know, obviously people want that to happen within the the losing crowd, people who you know the Democrats and the the people who lost this vote and think Trump's the Antichrist. Um, <laughs> I would I would say you know you can you can it, it might have some legs for a little bit, but it doesn't have the emotional power behind it. People want change, and Clinton clearly was not change, and and the fact that Trump's in there. Trump has already showed that you know he's backed off on so many things already. The only way that Trump got elected was to be the ass that he presented himself to be. You know, if you remember in like 2008, and, uh, what was it? 2008 and 2014, uh, 12, that that Ron Paul was running for president. Ron Paul got eaten alive by these people. They were calling him a racist. If you call Ron Paul a racist, you know who could ever go up against the machine that is the you know the Republican and Democratic Party, and and Trump was the guy. I mean, he took out the Democratic Party. He took out the Republican Party. You had to be that kind of an ass to win, to even get in position, and he won it. And and now you can see he's starting to back off, saying, okay, let's let's use good judgment here going forward. You know, yes, it is good judgment to stop people from coming into your country uh, who are looking to harm you. So <laughs> there's a lot of good judgment that, that the far left will not like, but – yeah, I, I don't I don't see the momentum behind other than, you know, Soros and, and maybe I don't even think the Clintons. I think the Clintons just want to run away now because they're starting to be exposed. Um, there will be some people, you know, George Soros might fund some of these riots and things, but it won't last long if, if they do last at all. And I think people will see that Trump is a, a much more fair uh, will be more fair than than any other president before, because there's a lot of work to do. We're talking about taking out the bad guy's complete infrastructure of how our lives are run and replacing it with something new. That that takes a lot of work, and, and Trump's the guy to do that, to tear things down and rebuild them. Now, now there's still bad guys, the elite. I mean, people call them shadow government. They're still in, in government. They're still there. They're there, but they, they're, they, aren't, they aren't making the major calls anymore. I, I do believe that, and I was just writing about this, and I have a new report coming out. Um, that that discusses the the surrender, literally the the surrender of the the bad guys. I, I think took place right around election day down in Antarctica. Believe it or not, and you can see, you know, John Kerry was in our our Secretary of State was in Antarctica the very day of the most important election uh, that the United States has ever had. So <laughs> there's a lot, and and then he went right to the Pope and. And they even have, I even have film of him saying, now you understand what's happening, don't you? And the Pope's, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it. So it, it's really interesting what's going on behind the scenes. What we see in the mainstream media is is like one hundredth of, of what the, what the full story is. And it's clearly what, you know, the, the sheeple are supposed to stay asleep until this whole thing falls apart. But we're waking up, and, and the alt media is is really waking people up to what's real news and fake news, and um, hopefully people will wake up faster. But uh, I think with a with the coming collapse of the the old system, people will have to wake up. 
You mentioned uh, fake news, and we know they're going after the alternative media. I mean, they're, they're calling it fake. I, I know there's like plugins now, Facebook and um, uh, Google. They're looking for some type of some type of technology to detect fake news. And it looks like this is their last ditch effort to control the uh, flow of information. Well, it's, uh, it, it's censorship. It is absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Yes. And, and, and it doesn't just go to Google and, and Yahoo and Facebook and it goes to Twitter and, and even YouTube. Um, a lot of the alt news YouTubers are, are seeing their views starting to disappear or, or go down slowly. And, you know, they can't do it all at once. It'll be too obvious. But yeah, they, if you control the media outlets, you control a lot. And, and don't think for a minute just because Facebook and, and Google are kind of new inventions run by young people that they are not rigging the information that you're receiving because they are. And this is a problem going forward. Um, I do think it will be resolved after the crash, after the, the destruction of what we once knew as our our both our monetary system and our system of governments and, and living under a nanny state that takes care of you the whole whole way through your life is going to absolutely disappear with the crashing of the monetary system. So, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting time. And I do think it is a shot for humanity to, to move forward with truth and honesty. But at the same time, truth and honesty means truth and honesty of our past also. And that's going to be the shocker for most people because we've been conditioned to live in this in this bubble of what's right and what's wrong and what's real and what's not. And and to find out one day that everything you thought was real really is not and everything you thought was a conspiracy is really true is, is going to be shocking to society. That is true. And, and you mentioned the crash. And what's very interesting is that uh, we see gold and silver – uh, the bad guys are still suppressing gold and silver. Even though Deutsche Bank was fined for gold and silver manipulation, I think it was like $60 billion, which is so really they, they no, settled, nothing. Yeah, they settled out of court. Yeah, they settled. And we also see after the elections that they've brought the unemployment down to 4.6. Obama you know, finally got his GDP above 3%. I mean, it, it seems like they're setting the stage to, to seem like you know the economy – is fantastic. Obama's going to hand it off to Trump. And look, I just gave him this incredible economy. It's incredible right now. The unemployment's at 4.6, GDP's at 3.2%. The stock market is at all time highs. Gold and silver, very, very low. I mean, is this a complete setup? Well, it gets back to what I just said about what is real and what is fake. I mean, the the artificialness of, of everything that we see, especially you know, reporting out of the government and, and the markets, Completely artificial, completely controlled, rigged, and manipulated, going back to the 1960s to the invention of computers and, and the people who invented computers and how they – that's what RUDA means. Root A is the very basis of our uh, computerized monetary system. And it, can, it, it is a complete uh, – it's, it's a shadow of what it should be. And it's been rigged for so long, these numbers and statistics are nowhere near what reality is. And the people who rig it. Now, they have no clue where this will all go if if their controls are, are let down or, or wiped wiped away. No longer can you claim that uh, unemployment's at, at any, anything less than 20%. You know, right now, we all know that they, they take off people who stop looking for work and say, oh, no, they've stopped looking for work, so we're not going to count them as unemployed. Well, what are they? If they're not unemployed, just because they've stopped because they can't find any work or they can't find a job they like, or more importantly, the government is paying for them not to work, that type of stuff is all going to go away. So, yeah, I, I'm surprised they, they're not saying in you know, financial news that uh, we are at the beginning of a, the biggest, greatest boom in the, in the world and we've come out of this uh, long-term kind of recession and this is going to be the greatest thing ever you know they're not really touting that because they know that would be a little too uh sensational and and they don't want to get caught in their lies still uh, but but saying that uh, you know we're in good shape when uh, deutsche bank the world's largest derivative holder uh is thinking about going bankrupt because the united states is is going to find them 16 billion dollars 
Well, they hold 50 trillion in, in derivatives. Why is no one talking about that? Why isn't anybody talking about the Deutsche Bank uh, sovereign bond holdings all throughout Europe? They're the largest holder of European bonds in these European countries, Italy, Spain, France, you, you name it in Europe is they're falling apart and they're gonna they're gonna default on their bonds and that's gonna be really ugly for the derivative world. So yeah, everything is fiction. Um, and once the system crashes and, and it's gonna crash overall, everything, as in every stock, every bond, it, it's the exchanges that are the problem. And they're all over rehypothecated and if you think you own a stock in your four oh one K, let me tell you you don't. You gave these these brokerage houses and, and mutual funds money, but they never went out and bought stocks for you. They didn't buy it. They used that money to rehypothecate everything else that they do. Your Schwab account, they never went and, and bought that stock that you think you have in there. It's just a piece of paper telling you that you own it. And you can tell by the amount of volume traded in these stocks every day. Every you know five to ten days, the full float of the the shares of the company are traded, which is ridiculous because you haven't touched your stock forever. It's in your 401k, but other people use it and trade it. And it's just a, a complete fictitious, fictitious uh, uh, game of musical chairs. And when the music stops, there's not going to be enough chairs for everybody who holds electronic financial assets. So they already have the, um, the crash planned. They already have it. They already know when they're going to do this. No, well, I, I mean, I think the it depends who you're talking about. They are we talking the good guys or the bad guys? They've been holding it off um, until they get people in charge in the United States who can who can kind of restart things. So I, I think we're not going to see a, a crash within the United States until after Trump gets into the office on the twentieth. But he's said he's been saying for over a year that he want he would rather it crash before. He gets into office, so yeah, I, I think the uh, at least the, the bubbles will burst. Now, I don't know if they're going to try to to kind of rejigger the same system. I doubt they will. I think it will be more of a you can't control the derivative bubble when it bursts, and in Europe, that's exactly what is going to happen with all these countries kind of bailing on the the financial elite. The, the ending of the euro will destroy every unbacked fiat currency. And there's no doubt about that, including the United States. Uh, you're talking about something that has never happened in the history of, of humanity. The, the ending of a, uh, a type of currency that is unbacked, it is, it is the second largest currency, I believe, still in the world uh, as far as you know, acceptance. Um, and ending that it will be catastrophic, especially because of the derivative bets that are that are interlaid within this whole financial game. Um, it, it's interesting. It's definitely, we're definitely at that time. Um, and, and the analysis I'm doing right now of the, the uh, Economist magazine cover is, is saying exactly that. We're at that time of the crash. And uh, whether it happens before January 20th or within the first half of next year is, you know, I, is, is questionable. But remember, the crash isn't going to be caused because the good guys or the bad guys go in and, and start fiddling with the markets. The crash is going to be caused when support is removed from fiddling with the markets. The markets have been fiddled with and controlled and under computer control since the 1970s. All you have to do is remove that control and everything goes down. So once that control is removed, um, what happens next? next? Is this the transition into a completely new system. Um, That's exactly what I've, I've been calling it is the transition. And the transition has started. It started, well, if you, if you look back, it started a long time ago. But it's the end of the road to Ruta, the end of the manipulation via computer controls of our system and the replacement of, some, with, of it uh, with something new, something more sound. And I believe we will return to some form of gold standard. It's exactly what was foretold in the road to Ruta documents that came out of the Fed, Boston. Um, but it might take a few failures in, as far as rejiggering the system. So the IMF might come and say, oh, you countries, you don't know what you're doing. We, we have these uh, special drawing rights that we're going to use as money going forward. Well, nobody trusts the IMF, so that will fail. And then the United States might say, well, you know, we're going to 
we're going to back our currency with land or, uh, which is, you know, how do you back a currency with land? We have land and it's backed. It's ridiculous. Any, the, the big problem is that we have relied on faith for so long and we have, we have accepted these, the fiat monetary system just purely on faith. It used to be the, the faith and credit of the United States. Well, that's gone now. And then it was the faith that the taxpayers will pay their taxes. Well, <laughs> who cares if the taxpayers pay their taxes when you have a, you know, a, a debt that is un, unmanageable and, and unpayable? The real debt, not the 20 trillion that they talk about, but you know, the, the future liabilities are just off the charts, hundreds of trillions. So it, it comes back to what are, what is, what are the people going to accept and what will they believe? There will be attempts to rejigger the old system. I think they will all fail. And ultimately, we'll go back to what we've always gone back to, which is gold and silver as money, physical coins as money, and physical coins in banks. If you want paper notes or electronic, great, but you better have the physical in the bank for exchange one to one with each dollar. You walk in and you get a, an ounce of silver. If if we go back to a, a true uh, definition of the dollar, that type of thing has always then what after fiat currencies crash, it always goes back to gold and silver. I think it will again, but it might take a little time for the them to rejigger the system, attempt to rejigger the system because people are going to be really pissed off, especially the rich, that they saved their whole lives and, and had faith in this electronic system that we call our uh, our fiat monetary system. So what happens to the dollar and the petrodollar and the dollar as the reserve currency, does that cease to exist? Well, well, the, the dollar, the, those are kind of three different things. You have the, the dollar, which is you know, defined in the, in the uh, what's it, the Monetary Act of 18-something, uh, but is defined as one ounce, near one ounce of silver. It's defined in actually grains of silver. That's the definition of a dollar. And then you have the Federal Reserve note that has taken on the, the, uh, the position of the dollar since 1913. And then you have the you know, world's reserve currency is mostly electronic IOUs. And what is an electronic IOU for a U.S. dollar is another U.S. dollar. So it's kind of you go round and round with this and say, oh, my God, how do we believe that it's a, the dollar is a concept now? It's not anything tangible. It's, it's a concept. It's, our, it's a currency that we use. But it is ethereal and it can be created out of thin air and is created out of thin air. So, you know, will it, if it does go away, if, if we do have a derivative collapse and all fiat money is, is gone basically because of the fractional reserve nature of banking. So when, when money is gone, how do we restart the system? I think we go back to the constitutional U.S. dollar, which is an ounce of silver, and then we need to figure out and the ratio between gold and silver because gold will be there and, and there's a lot of gold hidden within the United States that I think we've been just waiting for that rainy day. And that rainy day is coming. There's something strange going on at the U.S. Mint right now with the Silver Eagle program. Um, they are, they stopped a month early from uh, minting the, the 2016 coins and my mole within the, the U.S. Mint says they're going to be releasing uh, the 2017 coins at the beginning of January instead of the end of January. But and on a bigger side, they're not going to be releasing it under allocation, which is usually what they do. They say, okay, you know, the, the uh, new year, everybody wants those new coins this year. And so they used to allocate them and now it's going to be no allocation. So they're building inventories. And I think there is a lot of change coming to the United States. You're not even going to recognize the monetary system come the end of 2017. So what happens to um, everyone's savings? Um, you, you know, you have, people have the electronic dollar in their accounts. I mean, what happens to that? Is it wiped out? Is it, are they going to get pennies on the dollar for it? What happens uh, when they go through this transition? Well, it, it, it depends on the reallocation of money. Um, anybody putting their savings, quote, savings or retirement funds, Anybody who else, anybody, any other entity that is holding those for you, your Fidelity or Schwab or Bank of America, JP Morgan, whoever it is, you are completely reliant upon the credit of that entity that stands between you and your wealth. So if uh, Deutsche Bank goes down in in Europe and JP Morgan has you know 
10 or 20 trillion in derivatives with them, JP Morgan, and if you and you hold your your savings account or anything <laughs> with JP Morgan, there that credit is destroyed. So in, in same with Fidelity and in, in Schwab. Remember, they don't buy those stocks for you. They rehypothecate them. So they're fractionally reserved just like everybody else, and, and it goes away. You just It will be gone. You made the mistake of putting your money with a credit that it was not sound, you know, it was not reliable. And then FDIC insurance, which is supposed to guarantee, I think it's $250,000 or, or something to that effect, um, the FDIC has no money to back up their their insurance things. I think it's 1% or 2%. Of FDIC, and or it used to be one or two percent of FDIC insurance is actually held in reserve at the FDIC, and that we saw that go away with Bernie Madoff, and and it goes away so fast in the crashing of the banks back in two thousand eight. Here's the deal: they changed the law in with the Dodd Frank Act so that now the FDIC has to guarantee the derivative markets with the banks first and pay those out before. Any mom and pop gets their savings or checking account uh, insurance, which basically, and that's uh, hundreds of trillions of dollars. So basically, it guarantees that there will be no bailout when the banks come begging to uh, Congress, which they will. Um, just like in 2008, they begged for 700 billion. This time, it'll be 20 or 30 trillion. But that there is not enough money available in the world to to cover the derivative situation. And that, that was put in the Dodd-Frank Act for a very specific reason, to ensure that there wouldn't be a bailout this next time. So, yeah, if you hold money, if somebody else holds your wealth, you will lose it. It is a guaranteed fact. You will lose it in the, in the crash. You can beg for reallocation of new money and all that all you want, but it was your mistake to trust that these credits would, would survive any kind of banking collapse that's in the future. So how does gold and silver protect you? Uh, I mean, if there's, I mean, I say it, many people say it, you know, you should have the physical gold and, you know, keep it out of the system. In the end, how will this protect you? What do you do with it? Well, you, you keep it, you hide it, you store it on your own possession, make sure there's no credits between you, you know, no business credits. You don't hold it in a vault. You don't, you know, a third party vault. You don't hold it in a, in a certificate or a, or you know SLV or GLV, the uh, the exchange traded funds, because all those credits need to stay, you know, all those companies need to stay in business. Gold and silver will, has always been the kind of go to money. It's it's still constitutional money within the United States. It has always been the the form of money that people have turned to when there is monetary crisis or when there is a monetary collapse. Now this just happens to be. The biggest bubble in the history of bubbles on the monetary scene, the, the bubble of fiat money. Um, and everybody at, at some point, if, if you don't have physical gold and silver in your hand, you will be kicking yourself that you didn't make that step to remove the money from SLV or GLV, remove the money from even banking uh, or mining shares. You know, there's going to be no exchanges open. And there's going to be most mines within the United States and around the world will be nationalized because when the system collapses, they, a country will not allow just a handful of people to be in control of the wealth of, of the future wealth of the nation. So, yeah, I think even in the United States, there's going to be a lot of nationalization. And the the uh, the Fed, Boston comic books say exactly that. You know, should the government be digging the 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 metal that is used as money out of the ground or should it be private companies and private individuals should that ownership you know continue uh, but but remember also with rehypothecation you don't own those mining shares anyway even if you certificate them and you walk up to uh, you know the mine and say hey i have a certificate well everybody got screwed in this in this collapse so your certificate you know they'll say go wipe your butt with your certificate the rule of law won't even be enforceable when it comes to that type of stuff because of the rehypothecation of all the certificates out there, all the fake shares that are traded every day. Even the SEC in their own documentation says over three or over 200 million shares are not settled every day. And it's just insane what even, even what they admit. And that's only the things they admit. Um, so yeah, the insanity 
continues and, and if you don't have physical metal in your own possession i think you're absolutely crazy and, and expect to lose everything that's electronic held by a third party for those um financial institutions that still exist during this transition period there will be none, there will be none. there'll be none at all so well, wh- which one would i um, mean a small mom and pop maybe uh no 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 everybody is well, first of all, we have a fractional reserve system. So even the small mom, mom and pops that you know are only leveraged, what uh, say they're only leveraged two or three to one. It leverage is leverage. When remember, all their customers are going to be have lost everything too, because of the the large. When the large banks go down, the small banks go down, and when the small banks go down, the the uh, credit unions go down. It, because it's all intertwined, it's all intermixed. Yeah, they might not have derivatives. But all their customers lose everything too, and their customers will be running to the bank to withdraw whatever cash they might be able to get their hands on, which is impossible in a fractional reserve system. You got a, you know, it's a wonderful life type of event. It's a run on a bank, and the banks don't have the money. Their their money, your money is invested in Joe's house and in Fred's house. You know, it's the same thing that goes a a monetary system, a large bank that collapses. They call them too big to fails. If one fails, the reason it was too big to fail is that if it fails, every other monetary institution would fail as well. So I just want to make this clear. So when this happens, there will be no place to run to to get your money. Well, the, well <laughs> there will be no I, money to be had. I mean, I mean, people are going to run to – I mean, if, if I'm living in a certain town, they're going to run to their bank, right? They'll run I, to their I, bank, right. I, I bank. want my money. I, I'm going to go to ATM. I'm going to try to get into the bank. I want yeah. my money. And, and the first uh, two or three percent will be able to get their money out, and then all of a sudden the bank has no money, because remember they are fractionally reserved. Even if and they don't even hold the money truthfully anymore. That's but true. even if even if theoretically if they're you know a conservative uh, leverage is say eight or nine or ten to one, if they're ten to one and you have ten percent of your customers saying I want my money, they pull it out, the bank has nothing, so they have nothing to give to anybody else. It's all invested in, in other types of assets. Now, say they start selling, which everybody does, start selling those other type of assets. Those assets go down a whole lot faster because everybody's selling the same thing to just get some kind of liquidity. And then they just throw up their hands, shut the door, and walk away. And that's what will happen. And then you rely on your government, and your government has already said, well, we changed the law, and it's only derivatives that get paid out first in the hundreds of trillions of dollars. We don't have those. So we go to Congress. They go to Congress, and it, this progression just—you can see it happened in 2008. And but they they gave them the bailout. This time they'll be going to Congress, say, "Well, we need 20 or 30 trillion, but um, also we're going to have to bail out the. We're going to have to give the FEIC a couple hundred trillion for the derivative problem because that has to be paid out first. And Congress will say no. They wouldn't even. Congress wouldn't even be allowed to say yes to a, another $700 billion bailout, much less hundreds of trillions, something so outrageous and so angering to the people because we got screwed once again by this financial system and the banksters. There'll be a lot of anger out there. No way Congress is going to get away with another bailout. Throughout this transition and, and when the system comes back online and wh- whatever they're going to do and people have you know, the paper with their account and says, okay, I have you know, $50,000 in the account, what do they do? They bring the uh, – no, no, Well, yeah. No, you don't have fifty. You have $50,000 that was held by a company called Bank of America. Bank of America is insolvent. It has zero. You have zero. You have nothing. Now, the question is with the new system, when a new form of money – is reallocated, and, and the Fed, Boston, talks a lot about this in the Road to Ruta papers. When a new form of money is reallocated, you have to have buy-in from the people. That is the hardest part. The redistribution of the monetary wealth of a nation after a crash like this. No, the rich can't aren't going to be able to come in and say, hey, I had $3 million. I want my $3 million. No, it's not going to happen. What's going to happen, I believe, and, and they, the Fed Boston wasn't even sure of this, is that they had a, a system in place, not in place, but planned where they will allocate money according to your social security balances, which is really interesting because what that would do is – you know, it wouldn't do anything for those who have large savings accounts or anything like that. Those would be gone. But it, what it does is that it, it, it 
reallocates money according to who's paid into the system the longest. Because Social Security balance, you think now Social Security is like nothing. You can't live off it. That's because they've been hyperinflating the currency. But if all other money is gone, that, those Social Security balances in real U.S. dollars, a, a monetary system backed by gold or silver, that would be a whole different thing. And so those who have put in the most work over time will get the most, and those who have put in less will get a lesser amount. I think everybody would start with like a base currency, say everybody has you know, $100 in, in gold and silver added to your account if you're a, a taxpayer type of thing like that, and then we'll reallocate some money to the wealthy. And then over time, you know, as people work harder, they'll make more money, and you know, the, the system will get up and running again. But again, this is extremely difficult to do, and it, it, especially coming from an electronic monetary system, you know, how, how are they going to rejigger the system to you know, start the flow of, of capital again? It's going to be really difficult. It will be, I think it will be nation by nation. And we will shut our borders. And, and the cover of the 2017 Economist magazine has this hermit card on the, the top right. It's a, these tarot cards that I'm analyzing. Really interesting stuff about how this will all go down. But I do. I think we we will stop trading with people for a while, and and no one would accept the U.S. dollar, obviously. But uh, you know, issue a new form of currency based on sound money, based on gold and silver, because those people that have rigged our system for so long and abused it for so long will not be trusted. And it's all about trust when it comes to fiat money. So, yeah, there are plans. But, you know, even the Fed says in, in the Road to Ruta stuff that they don't even know if the, the people will accept something like that. Something is, is kind of fair as, you know, redistribution of money according to Social Security balances. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. And, and there's no doubt about it. We, are, we are, have started the process. And, and between now and the next few months, it'll, it'll kick into high gear. And 2017 will be that year of transition. So if people can't get their currency out and we have a complete meltdown of the system what about goods supplies things you know being delivered to stores well that's the other problem we have a what they call a just-in-time delivery system now it used to be there's warehouses full of stuff and they'd send them to the stores and you know when when a company wanted to build their inventory they would build warehouses now you order something and it the warehouses are trucks and ships that, that ship it all and because of the cost of holding large amounts of inventory, um, it, you know, it's opportunity cost, but it's also a financial cost of holding value and, and that value is not out there making money. People don't have large inventories. If you look at grocery stores, they have enough for you know, a couple days before they get their next shipment. Now, in times of emergency, it, it goes from a couple of days to a couple hours uh, you know, to run and get stuff. But yeah, that's the problem is, is the whole commerce problem is that the world has changed and, you know, will the internet even be working? You know, it takes companies surviving and thriving and, and main, being maintained. Will the internet be working? I don't even know. I mean, there are, are so many issues that this, this is going to um, affect. And that's exactly where we're headed. In the time of transition, the beginning part is going to be horrific. Many millions will die, literally die from all kinds of problems to the lack of power, to the, the lack of availability of medicine, to food, to you know, riots and, and civil disobedience. When, and the government won't even be working because there will be no money to pay the government. And our government is so overblown. I think it's 30 million people now either work for or are contractors and, and – completely depend on our, on the U.S. government, which is insane, the federal government, because you know, our founding fathers wanted a tiny, tiny, tiny federal government, and, and you can see the consequences now of a government being so overblown that they, you know, they control our lives, and you take that out, you take the nanny away from the nanny state, and you got a lot of chaos. Ultimately, it would be good, I think, for humanity, but, but there's a lot of chaos getting from here to there. When all said and done is... The private central bank, is that still going to be in existence? No, no, not even not even anything resembling a private central bank. And, and I, I had talked a lot about where this whole concept of uh, the Federal Reserve Bank in the U.S. came from and ha why we rejected it so many times until 1913. I, 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 I like G. Edward Griffith's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, but I, I think he's missing a big concept there. And the big concept behind all that is 
this gigantic gold mine that they found within the Grand Canyon that would have destroyed the monetary system had it been released because it was literally millions of tons of gold. Not at the time there was, I think, 100 million uh, ounces of gold floating around, but literally this, this, the mines, the gold discoveries in just within the United States are going to blow away all statistics of what we've been told, how much, you know, the, the two Olympic swimming pools of gold is so ridiculous. That was invented by Harry Oppenheimer in the 1960s because he, you know, he controlled the gold markets in South Africa. So yeah, the whole world, all the lies are going to be taken away and changed. And I, I think, I think we will be moving into something new, something different at a time when we desperately, desperately need uh, a little dose of reality to hit us in the face. Bix, thank you very much for being on the X-22 Report Spotlight. Once again, how can people see your work? Uh, go to roadtoruta.com, sign up for free emails. And I've got a report coming out this week on the Economist magazine cover that it, it, it's amazing. It has the spread of tarot cards and all the stuff we've been talking about today. It is it is uh, symbolized in these cards, and I, I go through a, a long report. Italy, they've taken the first step. So do you think the bankers, the central bankers, are they going to stop this from continuing? Do they have the ability to stop it? No, no. This is this truly is a revolution around the world. And you know, obviously the big one is, is the Trump uh, winning the election, that the, the bankers were sure that they had rigged everything properly. Um, but from what I can see, the, the good guys are absolutely winning this war. For years, people were telling me that there are no good guys and you know, there's no outside savior that's going to come and help us. I, I believe that. There is no outside savior. The good guys are us and, and the things that we do. And, and there are some powerful people within the military that are working to take down these, these banksters and the bad guys and the pedophilia guys. All this, the whole system is changing and it's coming apart and it's not going to stop with the Italian referendum. Um, the, with, the, with Italy right now, you got uh, the, the ECB absolutely rigging every market just like in the United States to keep things together. But uh, they're going to fall, every, every uh, nation state or whatever they are in, in Europe, they completely lost their, uh, their, their nation when they signed up with the EU because you, if you don't have control of your own money, you're absolutely screwed. And how the people of Europe let this happen in the first place is beyond me. But now they're, they're saying no more. You know, we, we learn the errors of our ways. Um, but the problem, of course, is going to be that they have no other form of currency. And so it's pretty much guaranteed to be a rocky road for everyone, even for, within the United States from here on out. Um, and this will continue in Europe. Uh, it was always kind of the, the plan to have Europe go first and then the United States as far as the, you know, the economic crash and, and the monetary implosion and the implosion of the derivative market. So, yeah, yeah things are moving right along. It's picking up speed, going faster and faster into the new year. Lots of signs pointing to massive changes next year. And I'm knee deep in, in that, trying to understand uh, how this will all play out. Re nobody really knows how it's going to play out, but the long awaited transition is is in full bloom, and it's easy to see now with the Brexit and the Trump win and the Italy referendum. And, and you're going to see it just tick one by one by one throughout Europe that people are going to throw off their suppressive leaders and, and pick somebody new, completely different, with a different idea for their country. And they have to because we're approaching a time when everything that was old will be thrown out. And we're going to have to reconstruct something new for the future. You mentioned uh, Trump, and we see that um, Jill Stein, backed by Soros, probably Clinton, uh, they're pushing these recounts in um, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. Do you believe these recounts are really to, you know, th the purpose is to recount the votes? Or is there something underneath this that they're really trying to... We know they're going after the alternative media. I mean, they're, they're calling it fake. I, I know there's like plugins now, Facebook and um, uh, Google. They're looking for some type of some type of technology to detect fake news. And it looks like this is their last ditch effort to control the uh, flow of information. 
Well, it's, uh, it, it's censorship. It is absolutely. That's exactly what it is, yes. And, and and it doesn't just go to Google and, and Yahoo and Facebook, and it goes to Twitter and, and even YouTube. Um, a lot of the alt news YouTubers are, are seeing their views starting to disappear or, or go down slowly, and you know they can't do it all at once. It'll be too obvious. But yeah, they, if you control the media outlets you control a lot and, and don't think for a minute just because facebook and, and google are kind of new inventions run by young people that they are not rigging the information that you're receiving because they are and this is a problem going forward um i do think it will be resolved after the crash after the, the destruction of what we once knew as our our both our monetary system and our system of governments and, and living under a nanny state that takes care of you the whole whole way through your life is going to absolutely disappear with the crashing of the monetary system. So, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting time. And I do think it is a shot for humanity to, to move forward with truth and honesty. But at the same time, truth and honesty means truth and honesty of our past also. And that's going to be the shocker for most people because we've been conditioned to live in this in this bubble of what's right and what's wrong and what's real and what's not. And, and to find out one day that everything you thought was real really is not. And everything you thought was a conspiracy is really true is, is going to be shocking to society. That is true. And, and you mentioned the crash and what's very interesting is that uh, we see gold and silver. Uh, the bad guys are still suppressing gold and silver, even though Deutsche Bank was fined, for gold and silver manipulation, I think it was like $60 billion, which is so really they, they no, nothing. Yeah, they settled out of court. Yeah, they settled. And we also see after the elections that they've brought the unemployment down to 4.6. Obama, you know, finally got his GDP above 3%. I mean, it, it seems like they're setting the stage to, to seem like, you know, the economy is fantastic. Obama's going to hand it off to Trump and Look, I just gave him this incredible economy. It's incredible right now. The unemployment's at 4.6. GDP's at 3.2%. The stock market is at all-time highs. Gold and silver, very, very low. I mean, is this a complete setup? Well, it gets back to what I just said about what is real and what is fake. I mean, the the artificialness of, of everything that we see, especially you know, reporting out of the government and, and the markets, completely artificial, completely controlled, rigged, and manipulated going back to the 1960s to the invention of computers and, and the people who invented computers and how they do. Well, it's their last ditch effort to not, not, it's not about the recounts. The vote, the vote was rigged. Both votes, all votes are rigged these days with computers. The question was who had the rigging power and Trump had the rigging power. The good guys had power over George Soros, who, in, who literally funds and creates these voting machines, the electronic voting machines. But it is, it's much deeper than that. This is, no, they won't be able to stop Trump from getting into the office if anybody gets in the office, as long as you know the world doesn't fall apart between now and January 20th. Um, but the whole idea of the recount was to uh, delay the electoral votes that uh, are supposed to be cast on the 20th of December, and then they're counted on the 3rd of January by the new Senate. And if, if it, it will probably go to a vote in the House and the Senate, whether or not the electoral you know, votes will be honored, um, which is the right. You know, anybody can raise their hand on January 3rd when the when the electoral votes are being counted and say, I want a you know, I want a vote within the House and the Senate. But the problem, obviously, is that Republicans control the House and the Senate. Um, a lot of that has to do with who Trump is putting in office you know, picking to, to be our, our, you know, the leader, the head of the Fed and, or, well, the head of the Treasury uh, and the head of all his cabinet uh, appointees. He has to sprinkle in bad guys and, as I call them, and, and people from the old establishment just so he gets in on the 20th. Remember, Trump is the best firer in the world. He, he'll fire. I, I don't want him to put a really good Treasury secretary in there and then the market collapse a couple of weeks after he gets in there and he's going to have to fire that Treasury secretary. I want him to put in the biggest shill market rigging guy known to man, which is this guy, Muchin. And and then when the system falls apart, I want him to fire him, the Goldman Sachs computer rigger, uh, and then hire someone that he wants, probably uh, this guy, Allison, 
is his last name, and he's a, a sound uh, money guy, and and most likely will will say let's go back to a gold standard and get rid of the Fed. So yeah, it, it's all kind of going as planned. So this recount, I think, is a uh, an aberration. Um, nothing will come of it, and the reason nothing will come of it is the good guys have the dirt on the bad guys, and Clinton's not going to say anything, or she'll be you know thrown in jail in a blink of an eye, and once they release her real emails, um, which are so criminal and, and so scary. And and I, I think at some point that kind of exposure has to happen to these people who are stepping down now from, from control. Do you think um, as we approach the 20th of January, we know there's um, protests being pushed for that day. Uh, do you think the bad guys at that point would try to have those protests become riots and spread across the country? Do you think they'll go that far to try? I, to- it, it, it's de- it's definitely you know part of you know, obviously people want that to happen within the the losing crowd, people who you know the Democrats and the the people who lost this vote and think Trump's the Antichrist. Um, <laughs> I would I would say that's what Ruta means. Root A is the very basis of our uh, computerized monetary system. And it can, it, it is a complete, uh, it's, a, it's a shadow of what it should be. And it's been rigged for so long. These numbers and statistics are nowhere near what reality is. And the people who rig it eat now, they have no clue where this will all go if, if their controls are, are let down or, or wiped, wiped away. No longer can you claim that uh, unemployment's at, at any, anything less than 20%. You know, right now we all know that they they take off people who stop looking for work and say, oh, no, they've stopped looking for work, so we're not going to count them as unemployed. Well, what are they if if they're not unemployed just because they've stopped because they can't find any work or they can't find a job they like or, more importantly, the government is paying for them not to work? That type of stuff is all going to go away. So, yeah, I, I'm surprised they they're not saying in you know financial news that uh, we are at the beginning of a – the biggest, greatest boom in the in the world, and we've come out of this uh, long term kind of recession, and this is going to be the greatest thing ever. You know, they're not really touting that because they know that would be a little too uh, sensational, and and they don't want to get caught in their lies. Still, uh, but but saying that uh, you know we're in good shape when you know, Deutsche Bank, the world's largest derivative holder, uh, is thinking about going bankrupt because the United States is, is going to fine them $16 billion. Well, they hold $50 trillion in, in derivatives. Why is no one talking about that? Why isn't anybody talking about the Deutsche Bank uh, sovereign bond holdings all throughout Europe? They're the largest holder of European bonds in these European countries, Italy, Spain, France, you, you name it, in Europe, is they're falling apart, and they're going to they're gonna default on their bonds And that's going to be really ugly for the derivative world. So, yeah, everything is fiction. Um, And once the system crashes, and and it's going to crash overall, everything, as in every stock, every bond, it's the exchanges that are the problem. And they're all over rehypothecated. And if you think you own a stock in your 401k, let me tell you, you don't. You gave these these brokerage houses and, and mutual funds money but they never went out and bought stocks for you. They didn't buy it. They used that money to rehypothecate everything else that they do. Your Schwab account, they never went and, and bought that stock that you think you have in there. It's just a piece of paper telling you that you own it. And you can tell by the amount of volume traded in these stocks every day. Every you know five to ten days, the full float of the, the shares of the company are traded, which is ridiculous because you haven't touched your stock forever. It's in your 401k. But other people use it and trade it, and it's just a, a complete fictitious, fictitious uh, uh, game of musical chairs. And when the music stops, there's not going to be enough chairs for everybody who holds electronic financial assets. So they already have the um, the crash planned. They, they, you know, you can you can it, it might have some legs for a little bit, but it doesn't have the emotional power behind it. People want change. And Clinton clearly was not changed. And, and the fact that Trump's in there, Trump has already showed that, you know, he's backed off on so many things already. The only way that Trump got elected was to be the ass that he presented himself to be. You know, if you remember in like 2008 and, uh, 
uh, was it 2008 and 2012 uh, that, that Ron Paul was running for president. Ron Paul got eaten alive by these people. They were calling him a racist. If you're calling Ron Paul a racist, you know, who could ever go up against the machine that is the, you know, the Republican and Democratic Party? And, and Trump was the guy. I mean, he took out the Democratic Party. He took out the Republican Party. You had to be that kind of an ass to win, to even get in position. And he won it. And, and now you can see he's starting to back off, saying, OK, let's let's use good judgment here going forward. You know, yes, it is good judgment to stop people from coming into your country uh, who are looking to harm you. So <laughs> there's a lot of good judgment that, that the far left will not like. But, yeah, I, I don't I don't see the momentum behind other than, you know, Soros and, and maybe I don't even think the Clintons. I think the Clintons just want to run away now because they're starting to be exposed. Um, there will be some people, you know, George Soros might fund some of these riots and things, but it won't last long if, if they do last at all. And I think people will see that Trump is a, a much more fair, uh, will be more fair than, than any other president before, because there's a lot of work to do. We're talking about taking out the bad guys, complete infrastructure of how our lives are run and replacing it with something new that, that takes a lot of work. And, and Trump's the guy to do that, to tear things down and rebuild them. Now, now there's still bad guys, the elite. I mean, people call them shadow government. They're still in in government. They're still there. They're there, but they, they're they aren't they aren't making the major calls anymore. I I do believe that, and I was just writing about this, and I have a new report coming out um, that it discusses the the surrender, literally the the surrender of the the bad guys. I, I think took place right around election day down in Antarctica, believe it or not. And you can see, you know, John Kerry was in, our, our Secretary of State was in Antarctica the very day of the most important election uh, that the United States has ever had. So <laughs> there's a lot. And, and then he went right to the Pope and and they even have, I even have film of him saying, now you understand what's happening, don't you? And the Pope's, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it. So it, it's really interesting what's going on behind the scenes what we see in the mainstream media is is like one hundredth of of what the what the full story is, and it's clearly what you know the the sheeple are supposed to stay asleep until this whole thing falls apart. But we're waking up, and, and the alt media is is really waking people up to what's real news and fake news, and um, hopefully people will wake up faster. But uh, I think with a with the coming collapse of the the old system, people will have to wake up. You mentioned uh, fake news. 